Our first lesson comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verses 23 through 29. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back, those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. But let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces? Here ends our first lesson. Our second lesson comes from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 29, through the 12th chapter, verse 2. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Here ends our second lesson. Our gospel lesson is according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter, verses 49 through 56. Jesus said, I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and how I wish it were already ablaze. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? 
No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. The title of our message for this weekend is from our second reading, Surrounded by so great a cloud. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> so this morning we had a Bible study and we were talking about the importance of having a spiritual community, having a community of faith. We we're talking about how challenging the world we live in is, especially at this present moment in time, and how that makes having a community of faith, a spiritual community, even that much more important. And by having a spiritual community, we do not mean that we have a community where everyone is like we are and we all agree on everything and the community coddles us and tells us what we want to hear. In fact, in our first reading for today, the prophet Jeremiah challenges us to beware of, a, of communities such as that and he contrasts um, true prophets from false prophets. And he says, false prophets say, oh, I had this dream, I had this dream, and they um, tell their listeners everything their listeners want to hear. Uh, and he said, that is not what prophecy is about. He says, if in fact what they're preaching comes true, if it's reality and it, and it happens and it comes true, then yes, they're, they're true prophets. But he talks about how true prophets often preach to us a challenging word, a word that makes us a little uncomfortable sometimes. Um, and yet, that is what the gospel message is all about. I've told you frequently when I was in seminary, there was a big banner up in the chapel and it said, Jesus Christ came to comfort the disturbed and to disturb the comfortable. So we might also say that the community of faith, the Christian community, the body of Christ also comforts us when we're disturbed but um, disturbs us or challenges us when we get too comfortable. And that's what true spiritual community is all about. Jesus also tells us that, um, that sometimes we, um, even in our most intimate human relationships, uh, we feel very, very differently from um, those people closest to us. And sometimes when we really um, follow the way of Jesus and his oftentimes challenging message, that it will not make everything peaceful and harmonious and copacetic, but sometimes it will in fact cause friction and division and strife, even in our deepest human relationships. 
Now, um, I think many of us have experienced that recently in our nation, in our political context. Um, I've actually had been so deeply saddened that couples that I have married, officiated at their marriages, have divorced, have actually divorced because one voted for one particular person and the other one voted completely in the opposite, at the opposite end of the political spectrum. So their political um, stances were so deep and so divisive um, that it caused a divorce in their marriage. Uh, other families, many of our church families have told me that among their children and their siblings and close friends and relatives, um, the political divide we're experiencing in our country is dividing families and friends, etc. Very, very challenging. And Jesus, um, I've experienced this in my own family. And then when I read today's gospel where Jesus said, do you think that I came to bring peace to this earth? No. And he talks about this fire, this fire that um, divides often in one family, um, sisters and brothers and parents and children, etc. And so what I've been wrestling with is why is it that in our communities of faith, we don't agree either, but somehow um, our political differences don't divide us? Um, in other words, our communities of faith might hold a key for our other relationships in that we can be all over the political spectrum and yet focus on our oneness in Christ. And why doesn't it divide us in our spiritual communities as it does in our families or our marriages or our friendships? Um, maybe there's something to be learned from the spiritual community. And I saw that this morning, even at Bible study, we were talking about a particular topic. We're talking about demons, believe it or not, and what what is meant by demons in the New Testament. And some people take it on a very spiritual level. It's a state of mind. It's that negative parts of ourselves. We interpret it in a more spiritual, psychological sense. We all have our demons within us. And others took it very literally, that no demons are physical, negative entities, negative embodied um, beings who possess people and houses and et cetera. And, you know, so we had one end of the spectrum to the other in terms of what we believed about something. And yet that could all kind of be held together in the body of Christ. So what is it we can learn from the body of Christ, from spiritual community, that can perhaps help us to heal the divide in our marriages, in our families, in our friendships, and in our nation? Um, I'm rereading a book I must have read 20, 25 years ago uh, by an author, I love this author, Anne Lamott, and the book is one of her first books. It's called Traveling Mercies, Some Stories on Faith. And in the first chapter or two of the book, she shares her own life story, and it's a tumultuous story. It's a story of her struggle with addiction, it's a story with her, um, of her struggles with um, family relationships and men. It's a story of her 
um, getting pregnant and having an abortion when she was at the lowest place in her life. And then it's a story of how later, still in a very low place in her life, she became pregnant again, not married. No way um, that she could even marry the, the father of this child. And she was at her wit's end, and she kind of stumbled into a church, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, uh, she stumbled into it because every uh, Sunday she would go to a flea market and the church stood on the edge of a field where this flea market was held. So each week she'd go to the flea market and get a little closer <laughs> to this church and sit on the front steps and then the next week she'd move up a step and then finally she went inside and when she finally was able to stay one week through the whole thing and hear the sermon. The word of God just spoke to her heart and she just wept. And this community of sisters and brothers in Christ just wrapped her in their arms and loved her into wholeness. And she has a saying in this book, and it's, uh, I might be giving it my own twist, but it's the idea of this. Jesus Christ loves you as you are and loves you too much to leave you there. <laughs> in other words, Jesus loves us as we are, but also because of that deep love for us, wants us to move from our lowest place, wants us to live our fullest um, life um, that is lived in communion with God and right relationship with God and with others and with all creation, right? And so this community, um, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, um, brought about this healing and this transformation in Anne Lamott's own life. And she tells the story of a particular woman, an elderly woman who was very poor, but would bring these little Ziploc baggies filled with coins, just change, and that would be her offering. And the first week when Anne Lamott came in and just kind of lost it, this woman handed her this little Ziploc bag of coins, which was like, the widow's might, it was all that she had, and she continued throughout Anne Lamott's time at this church, giving her these bags of coins to help her along the journey. As Anne Lamott grew and became strong in her relationship with God, it affected her relationships with others. And there was another person, um, that she came to, to be friendly with, whose child had cystic fibrosis. And Anne Lamott talks about when we've received that, that gift of community, of spiritual community, and we know how important that is, then we want to share that with others. So she talked about this community, this spiritual community that just enveloped, just wrapped their loving arms around this family whose youngest child has cystic fibrosis and how people just drop off food, walk their dogs, you know, bring their other kids where they need to go, um, surround them with prayer, do fundraisers to help them pay all the med like, you name it, this, um, this, community, the spiritual community, just wraps their arms around this struggling family. And so, um, I love that image of Christian community as that which just loves us as we are, but loves us so much that it won't leave us there. It won't let us stay there. 
And this community, of course, involves, today at Bible study, we were talking about how our spiritual community involves the people beside us, the people living today, but it also involves that great communion of saints, those who've gone before us. Um, I think of the many saints right here in this space of First Lutheran Church, having been pastor here now for 25 years, 26 years, August 1st was my 26th anniversary. And the people of faith who's, who I remember, I remember their stories, I, they've sustained me with their prayers and they still sustain me, even though they now are on the other side and live in the fullness of God's presence. So sisters and brothers in Christ, today, as challenging as life can be in this difficult world, as divisive as our world can be, as our families can be, as our relationships, our deepest human relationships can be. Thanks be to God, we've been given the gift of a community of faith that doesn't coddle us or tell us what we want to hear, that rather holds us accountable and comforts us when we need to be comforted, but also challenges us when we need to be challenged and loves us as we are, but loves us too much to let us stay there. And surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, let us, as it says in Hebrews, let us lay aside every obstacle and the weight of sin that clings so deeply and run with perseverance that race of this life of faith that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter, completion, fullness of that faith. Amen.
And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.